I'm back with another educational beauty video, but this time it's the ultimate guide to setting powders. I'm about to explain it all to you, go through setting powders with you, talk to you about how they work, why they work, and which ones are kind of like good for different things. So I'm just kind of like breaking it down for you. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. And don't forget to head over to Instagram if you enjoy reels, a bit of unboxing. I think you're going to love it there too. Now let's get started with this video. Now when it comes to setting powders, I know we all kind of like know the rough idea of it, right? They set your makeup. So that's ultimately what a setting powder is. Now there are several different types of setting powders and I know that I have spoken before about kind of like the best setting powders, especially over on my online publication, Confessions of a Creative. So you might wanna head over there and subscribe because there's a lot of detail like articles about makeup, best products, like what they're like, detailed reviews on it. I really wanted to focus on kind of a few different types of setting powders and how they work. This isn't necessarily the best setting powders. This is really a case of like talking through different types of setting powders and what they're best Best used for. If you want this finish, then this is the kind of powder you want to go for. If you want that finish, then that's the kind of powder you want to go for. So let's firstly talk about how setting powders work. So a setting powder is very finely milled and it's usually loose. Like you do have pressed powders as well, but we're really talking about loose powders today. Loose powders are the best when it comes to actually setting your makeup. I know that a lot of people actually apply their makeup and then they, they leave it. They don't really apply much powder or they might apply apply something like the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter airbrush finish I, don't, I can never get the names right because there's just so many different like words in the one name of this product they use that and they'll sometimes they're like okay but later on the day it kind of like creases up and I don't understand why so I really wanted to explain to you that loose powders are going to set your makeup pressed powders will set your makeup but only for a short period of time is it is inevitably gonna gonna end up creasing up because a loose powder really kind of packs onto the skin and you're kind of pressing it in. It isn't just about the product, it is also how you apply it. Now, when it comes to loose powders, I personally use a couple of different powders, but my main one that I opt for is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Powder in Light Banana. This is a kind of micro fine powder which doesn't leave a kind of cast over the skin you don't get that flashback it doesn't look white it's so ultra fine that it kind of really kind of disappears once you've set your makeup and I usually don't feel like I need to kind of reapply powder the most I would do is carry around for example that Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder and probably use that very very late at night if I'm still out so I do feel like these hold your makeup in place the best but ultimately at least like I don't know eight to 12 hours later, you're gonna see some level of shine come through. And that's where I would end up opting for a pressed powder. There are a few different ways that you can use these powders. And there are a few different powders that are good for those different ways. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today. Let's talk about this one first. This powder, I use this and I press it into the skin with a powder puff. So I really dip into that powder, cover my puff up completely, and then I press on top of my base, like my concealer or foundation. I press and then I basically dust it off very lightly with a brush. Another thing you can do with this powder is press and just keep pressing. Just keep pressing with the powder puff until the powder disappears. I would say that is the ultimate way to set your face. If you really want it to last and you want that matte look and you want your makeup to stay in place all day, that's the best way to set your makeup. Use the powder puff, but actually keep going until it all disappears. And I've just realized I've put a whole load of powder on my face because there was already powder on this sponge. But this is what I'm talking about. You just keep pressing, right? And that is the ultimate way to set your powder. Use a good powder puff like Laura Technique, Laura Techniques. <laughs> Laura Techniques, the Laura Mercier powder puff. Use a good powder puff like that that's really thick and like luxurious and like really press it. It's big enough to go all over the face too. So that's what I would recommend if you want the ultimate way to set your, your face. Now, the other option that you have is that you could, like I said, press it and then dust it off with, with a brush, which is what I like to do so it doesn't look overly matte initially. Then the other way that you can set your makeup is just use a brush and dip it into the powder, take off the excess and just brush it all over, but your makeup will not stay 
for very long. It's gonna, it's a very short-lived kind of setting process or finish is what I'm trying to say. So it's not gonna like stay matte. It's not gonna stay in place. You probably will see some creasing. You probably will see that shine come through. So just bear that in mind. I would recommend this powder for majority of the different kind of like ways of setting. It works well for all of those ways. If you want something which is just that notch kind of like uh, a bit more pro in the sense of it's really gonna stay put, I would go for something like the Ben I uh, Luxury Powder. You have different shades in this too, which is pretty good. You've got Buff, which is this one. It still works on my skin color, but it also is good for much paler skin tones. You can use the Banana Powder. I find that sometimes that's a bit too yellow, so I like to mix it with this. That's the ultimate. Like That's what I would use if you really wanna make sure that your makeup is not going anywhere. And you can dust this on too, but again, pressing is always the, the way to go when it comes to keeping it on. The other option that you have is something like the hourglass veil translucent setting powder now i'm going to be honest i don't think this sits well when you try and press it onto the skin with a powder puff because i've noticed it sticks to certain areas and then you just get this patchiness there so i honestly would not recommend using this to press if you put a decent amount of concealer or foundation on underneath. If you're hardly using any concealer and foundation, then yeah, go ahead and press if you want. But if you're using like, say, like you're using a decent amount of concealer, I wouldn't press. I would use this to dust on. If you want something where you're just gonna dust it on the face and you're happy with that, then I'd go for something like that because it's it's quite a nice finish it gives, you know, when you dust it on. But ultimately, if you really wanna go for something that's gonna stay put, I would go for something like the Makeup Forever powder Powder or the Ben Eye powder. There are several other powders which are very, very good. I think the easiest way for me to kind of explain the difference as well is that these two powders, the Makeup Forever and the Ben Eye, like if you were to look at the powders in your hand next to one another, the consistency is, is the texture, not the consistency, the texture is pretty similar, right? Like this is a lot more finely milled than the Ben Eye powder. The Ben Eye is a bit more kind of chunky, you know? I'm just making this really easy to understand so I'm not going to go like into like fancy words or anything plus it's not my style but I'm gonna uh, let you know the difference between those and the hourglass one because I feel like the reason I've picked these powders is because I feel like those are the powders that I had which to me are a different texture you know even though they're loose powders they are different texture and I've used them so I know the kind of difference when it comes to the finish and if I was to like look at the powder from hourglass this is very kind of like velvety and it kind of like almost disappears into the skin but it does leave a kind of a finish i don't know if you can see that but there is a difference in color here compared to here so it does leave a color there and it kind of like it it just kind of like almost like it I know this isn't what happens, but it kind of like evaporates into the skin and it feels very silky. Yes, it's a great feel that you have, but I do feel like when you're pressing that, it kind of like grabs hold to any area which is kind of like a little bit wet or tacky and sticks there more than other areas. And then you can see it when you brush it off. That's why I really think that powder is better just as a dusting powder. Now, if I was to get the Makeup Forever powder, and I put this on my hand next to it, it doesn't just disappear into the skin, you know? I feel like it leaves like a good layer. Like I really wish I could show you this very, very close up. Maybe I'll try. There is a vast difference to how both of these powders look on my hand. Now this one here is the Makeup Forever. This one here is the Hourglass. Now obviously they both leave a little bit of a cast on the skin, but this one, it's easier for it to kind of lighten up. It really kind of just doesn't show any kind of dryness. Whereas here I can see the dry patches underneath the powder. Now, if I was to then go over to my Ben Eye powder and apply this above, I am getting a similar finish to the Makeup Forever. It's kind of like diluted a little bit in terms of color. See the color that this gives you? So this is why I feel this, the hourglass powder is more of a dusting powder. You can't press this into the skin. It doesn't look good. Like you can see that that's so obvious in comparison to the other two as well. We all have these fine lines, right? I'm seeing those fine lines. I wanted to show you here, right? These fine lines underneath, like the cracks in my skin are so visible with that powder. 
With these two, it's not. What I'm really trying to explain to you is that there is, it's very easy for us or just for consumers as general to read what it says that the powder is for. And if the company tells you, yes, you can use this as a setting powder, you can press it into the skin, you can bake with it, then you're gonna go ahead and just assume you can do it. But honestly, I feel like that's something you need to try yourself. Like if you are going into a Sephora store and you wanna know which powder to get, don't be afraid to use the back of your hand because that should give you some indication as to how that settles into your skin. If it doesn't look good without any concealer and foundation underneath, it's definitely not gonna look good when it's on top of foundation and concealer. Really think about the powder. Like if it's something that, for example, to me, this hourglass powder is a bit fancy in comparison to the Makeup Forever and the Ben Eye. I love hourglass for some of their other products. I'm not the biggest fan when it comes to their setting powder. Again, I feel like, like this is the veil translucing translucent setting powder. I do feel like this does give you a veil of kind of color, but I don't want that color. I want that setting, right? So I really do hope that that's kind of like made it a bit clearer in terms of like, you know, how different powders are different. You know, there, there's, they, they're all called setting powders. They're all called loose powders, but there is a massive difference between the type of powder, the way that it's kind of like finely milled. Is it, is the powder like just focusing on the fact that it's trying to set your makeup or is the powder a bit fancy where it has kind of like a slight slight subtle shimmer in there I'm not interested in that at all because my my main focus my main aim and want from a setting powder is that it sets my makeup and that it lasts as long as it possibly could without that shine coming through without the creasing happening that's what I want from a setting powder I'm not interested in in shimmer in my powder if that's the case I'll go and use a highlighter on top you know so you've really really got to think about what it is you want from your powder, what the texture is like. I really do hope that this is kind of like giving you a better understanding of setting powders. It's really not just about going out and getting any setting powder. It's about really trying them on your hand. Like, does this one leave, like if there's a white cast there, I don't want that when it comes to my face. Like I, I want to be able to still have my natural color come through from my foundation or my concealer. I don't want something which is really going to change the whole look of my face. I just want Want it to kind of set my makeup and that's it. I really do hope this has kind of like given you a bit more of an insight into setting powders and understanding the finish of them and how they work on your face and how the different methods of application are going to really give you very different finishes to your skin. Like I said, if you are happy with a dusting of powder to set your makeup, fine, but it's really not going to set your makeup for long. If you want that makeup to stay put, it's the technique as well as the powder that you use. So it is down to the product, but it's also down to the technique. Pair those two great things together and you're get, gonna get the most amazing finish and makeup that is set and stays put for hours and hours and hours. So I hope this has really helped you. I hope it's given you a better insight into setting powders. If you wanna see more videos like this about other products, please do let me know in the comments below because I would love to kind of delve a little bit, bit deeper if you guys actually wanna see more of these videos. So I'm sending you loads of love wherever you are in the world and if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos until the next video take care and i'll see you soon